morning everyone uh as promised we decided we're going to go ahead and do a video today on how to winterize your trailer it's not as complicated as a lot of people think unfortunately every trailer can be a little bit different um, as far as where things are located and what things to look for sometimes you have different devices that need to be drained i've got a 2022 palomino puma 289 bhs so a lot of the components are similar in different trailers sometimes you need to undo certain things but this one's set up pretty good and if you want to have like what they call a winterization package uh, for the different valves and bypasses most rv places can install those for you if you're not comfortable doing it yourself but this stuff's actually pretty easy to do uh, the first thing you're going to need to get is some rv antifreeze not automotive antifreeze this is meant to be in your watering system it's not toxic if it was ingested usually most trailers you can do it with one maybe two gallons if you've done it properly the first thing you need to do is drain all your tanks okay uh your gray water your black water and um preferably all your fresh water so i'm going to show you how to do that first on my trailer just like many other trailers um, we have what's called low point drains and main tank drains. So the first thing I'm going to do is come under my trailer here and I'm going to try to point out a few things. I've got this cover on here. You'll usually have a white and a red line or a blue and a red line. So you go ahead and open that up. And a lot of the times, not a lot of stuff's going to come out of it. Okay, um, that's because you're creating a vacuum and you need to open some lines inside, which I'll show you in a minute. My trailer has a really cool main water line. It's a great big line. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it and see the fresh water line come out. Most trailers don't have that big of a, a drain for the main. Uh, makes it very nice for my trailer. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the faucet that's farthest away from those main uh, low water low point drains and crack some valves. For me, it's my outside kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and open the hot and the cold. See if you can see that there. That's going to release the vacuum in the line and allow the rest of the fresh water to drain out of the system. The next thing that I like to do is drain the uh, hot water tank. And what I mean by drain the water tank in my case is pull what's called the anode. So we have our hot water heater here and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Most of the time your anode looks about like that there. This is something that degrades. It's designed to do so to keep your uh, tank from corroding. Can be a bit of a pain to get out. I keep a ratchet with a one and one sixteenth socket, long socket or an extension just for this purpose in the trailer. So all I'm gonna do is, see if I can do this with one hand. Just gonna put it on there and start backing it out if I can get it on. <laughs> Now, word of caution, if you've recently been using your trailer, there is going to be hot water in this tank. So when that comes out, it could burn you. So what I like to do is, since I'm draining my, my black water and all that, I'll turn my water heater off, the, the heat, and then I will pump a bunch of that hot water into my black tank through the toilet. Use the shower head and spray it right into the toilet to get that hot water in the tank. I think it helps break up the uh, waste and it puts cool water in this uh, hot water tank. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. See if I can get that. When you pull this out, that is a fairly new anode. Now you'll notice it's kind of bubbling and glurgling. If you flip this lever, up, you will get 
a release of all the water in your hot water tank. That will allow it to drain all that water that can freeze out. Again, back to this anode. They come in different lengths. There's about three different types of metal for different purposes designed for the different water chemistry that you might be dealing with. It is kind of cruddy looking and stuff, but that's doing what it's supposed to and get it to focus. Uh, when it gets very corroded, just go ahead and replace it. They're pretty cheap. Most uh, hardware stores, I think even Walmart and stuff like that will have them and they're not that expensive. I'm gonna leave this out and let that water continue to drain out of my hot water tank while I go through the rest of this process. So, the first thing, we, we're gonna have all the water out of the hot water tank. So it's, it's kind of pointless to put RV antifreeze in your hot water tank. And if you were to do this without bypassing the hot water, you're gonna use several, several gallons of the RV antifreeze which adds to the cost. It's not that expensive, eight, $10 a gallon, but it, it's kind of a waste. And, and I do believe it's not great for the inside of your hot water tank because it can be very sticky. So our trailer and many others like it have bypass valves. You need to find your back side of your hot water tank. So wherever that drain was, the anode is, the exact opposite side is the back side. So, I'm going to point, I'm going to try to point here. Okay, this bottom valve is how the water gets in and out along with the top valve. Okay, cold water in, hot water out. This has small valves. Let's see if I can line all this up. That just turn on the top and the bottom. Okay, sorry, it's not a great video there and when it's in line with the hoses it's bypassing the hot water tank there's a loop of hose that goes from valve to valve so that this antifreeze won't get pumped in through the hot water tank sorry about the dogs okay the next thing i need to do is find my water pump okay it is in this trailer located behind this panel. I'm really not sure why they always seem to put these panels in here, but there's usually a screw at the bottom. I've already got mine loose. Just set it to the side. And here we have our water pump, okay? Now this one is really nice. It comes with this extra valve and this extra piece of hose, okay? Again, you can have these installed if your trailer isn't equipped with it. But all I do is I simply flip this valve. Now, instead of it drawing water from the tank down below that we've emptied, it's gonna draw through this hose. Sorry, not very focused. The idea is that we're going to stick that hose right in the jug of antifreeze and allow it to draw up through the system okay so now we've let this drain for a little while next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come out here and uh, i am going to close those sink valves that i that i opened earlier and then i'm going to close the low point drains So, right, oops, there we go. Now, I'm going to leave the drain for the main water tank open throughout the winter. Let everything completely drain out of it. I'm gonna leave the anode out of the water heater. Allow everything to drain out of it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this antifreeze, the RV antifreeze, and all I do is pop this hole in it. Don't let that fall in it. If it gets in your pump, it could mess it up, that little silver piece. So now take this cap off. All I'm gonna do is stick it right down in there. 
hopefully without spilling. Give me just a moment. The reason I'm worried about it spilling is again, this stuff can be very sticky. When you're done flushing your lines, you really want to wipe all this antifreeze off uh, up out of your sink and your toilet. Is if it dries up, it's just super, super gummy. So now what I'm going to do, got everything closed, got the antifreeze in there, got everything bypassed. All I'm going to do is turn on my water pump. Now watch what happens. You're going to see the tank, that pink level dropping. And I heard the uh, pump pressurize. Okay, so now I need to flush my lines. So I'm going to start in the bathroom. So first thing I'm going to do is open my hot water. It's just what I do. No right or wrong way, really. You can see it's clear water coming out. And it's pushing all that clear water out with antifreeze. I'm waiting to hear I see pink. Now it's pink, and I just turn it off for now. I'm going to probably do it more later, but now I'm going to do the cold water side and flush that line. There's the pink there. Now, just going to simply step on the toilet. See the pink show up there. Now, I'm going to come in here to the shower. I don't like this getting everywhere, so I'm going to kind of point it well, for the video. I'll just go ahead and leave it for now. But I'm going to open up the hot water. Wait until the pink comes. There we go. Now I'm going to do the cold side. Flushed both of those lines. Now I'm going to come to the kitchen sink. Flip it to hot. Pink. Flip it to cold. Now what I've heard is the, the, the tank is just vibrating very, or the, excuse me, the pump is vibrating very quickly. It's not building pressure. And if I look... My tank's empty, my, my gallon jug. So I'm gonna grab me a, another jug here. Go ahead and open it up. Set that there again. Simply put my hose in the fresh water, the fresh tank, if you will. And I'm gonna open the cold and let it pressurize again. So now I'm getting a good flow of antifreeze. Most of the water's out there. Um, make sure all of your appliances that use water have this run through it. If you happen to have a bigger trailer that has a, a washing machine, or I've seen them even with dishwashers, run it through a cycle, okay? Let it get all the water out in the hot and the cold, run the water on warm if it's a washing machine to, to get both of them. And then of course, clean it out really good so it doesn't gum up. The next thing we need to do, back out here to the outdoor sink, and same thing, get all those bubbles out, okay, got the hot water, cold water, and our trailer, like many others, also has a outdoor shower. So I'm going to go over here and open up my outdoor shower and simply open this up. Sorry, a little hard with one hand. You can see that the antifreeze is coming out a bit good on that. Now I'm going to flip it over to cold. see some bubbles come out there I'm gonna try to hop one more time make sure everything's good 
Okay, folks, I've just did both sinks. I've done the outside sink. I've done the bathroom toilet. I've done the shower and the outside um, appliances. And that is all there is to winterizing a line. Um, I'm gonna leave my hot water bypassed and I am going to put this cap back on my um, pump bypass. So you can see I used about a gallon and a half, a little more than a gallon and a half of antifreeze. So less than $20 to winterize my trailer. Um, really not sure what uh, trailer places charge for it, but I'm gonna bet it's a little bit more than that. So I put this cap back on. Now I'm just simply gonna go back to, first thing I'm gonna do, sorry, is turn my water pump off. And then I'm gonna flip my pump valve, this one right here, back to the main tank. The reason I did that is so now it's set up to work first thing right out of the gate next year. Fill it with water, um, turn on all my faucets one at a time, flush all the pink out and the pink antifreeze until I get clean water running through it. Once I get all the antifreeze out of my system, then I go ahead and open the water heater back to normal operation after, of course, putting the anode back in it and you're ready to go. It's really that simple. Again, some trailers don't have the bypass valves. Um, some trailers don't have the extra hose coming off of the water pump. You can buy those kits for relatively cheap and they are pretty easy to install with some basic knowledge. If you're not comfortable doing that again, go ahead and have your RV dealer install it one time and then you can uh, winterize for the, the rest of your RV's life. Um, a lot of people ask when to winterize. For me, we are, we've been camping in our trailer for a little over a month. It's November here in Utah. Last night it was down to 13 degrees. I did post another video on uh, living in your RV in really cold weather, but we're going home. We're, we're calling it a season. Um, I can guarantee you at below 25, 20, 25 degrees for extended periods of time, your trailer is going to freeze up. Some trailers uh, can get by just fine with using air, like out of an air compressor and blowing your lines out. A lot of people prefer that because they think that the RV antifreeze leaves a bad taste in their system, which it might, I've never noticed it. Um, and for me, I like to have all possibility of freezing out of my system. This guarantees it's flushed every last little bit of uh, <laughs> fluid out of the system or water out of the system and I, I have stuff in there that will not freeze and will not mold water sitting in a line for a very long time can mold um, so that's another reason I do it but uh, if you're not getting down below 30 25 30 degrees for extended periods um, you probably don't need to winterize just drain it really good um, something else I like to do before the season like we've been camping for a long time we have our slide out out and leaves, ice, snow, whatever might be on top of that. And I went out today. Um, I don't, I'm six foot four, 270 pounds. I do not like crawling on this roof, especially when it's cold. Uh, nothing likes to be manipulated when it's cold, it crack in my opinion. So I just back my truck up to this uh, slide, get up there with a broom push everything off so that way when I bring the slide in it doesn't drag all that crap through the seals um, or even into the trailer itself so just some of the tips that I do you really see how easy winterizing can be with some basic knowledge so hopefully this helps um, and uh, if you have any questions feel free to uh, leave some some comments down below and we'll uh, try to answer them as needed thanks again